Chapter Ten of the Story of Doctor Doolittle by Hugh Lofting. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The tenth chapter, the rarest animal of all. Push me, Pullius are now extinct. That means there aren't any more. But long ago, when Doctor Doolittle was alive, there were some of them still left in the deepest jungles of Africa and even then they were very, very scarce. They had no tail but a head at each end, and sharp horns on each head. They were very shy and terribly hard to catch. The black men get most of their animals by sneaking up behind them while they are not looking, but you could not do this with the push me pull you because, no matter which way you came toward him, he was always facing you. And besides, only half of him slept at a time. The other head was always awake and watching. That was why they were never caught and never seen in zoos, though many of the greatest huntsmen and the cleverest menagerie keepers spent years of their lives searching through the jungles in all weathers for push me pull -yous. Not a single one had ever been caught. Even then, years ago, he was the only animal in the world with two heads. Well, the monkeys set out hunting for this animal through the forest, and after they had gone a good many miles one of them found peculiar footprints near the edge of a river, and they knew that a push me pull you must be very near that spot. Then they went along the bank of the river a little way, and they saw a place where the grass was high and thick and they guessed that he was in there. So they all joined hands and made a great circle round the high grass. The push me pull you heard them coming, and he tried hard to break through the ring of monkeys, but he couldn't do it. When he saw that it was no use trying to escape, he sat down and waited to see what they wanted. They asked him if he would go with Dr. Doolittle and be put on show in the land of the white men. But he shook both his heads hard and said, Certainly not. They explained to him that he would not be shut up in a menagerie, but would just be looked at. They told him that the doctor was a very kind man, but hadn't any money, and people would pay to see a two-headed animal, and the doctor would get rich and could pay for the boat he had borrowed to come to Africa in. But he answered, No. You know how shy I am. I hate being stared at. And he almost began to cry. Then for three days they tried to persuade him. And at the end of the third day he said he would come with them and see what kind of a man the doctor was first. So the monkeys traveled back with the push me pull you, and when they came to where the doctor's little house of grass was, they knocked on the door. The duck, who was packing the trunk, said, Come in, and Chi-Chi very proudly took the animal inside and showed him to the doctor. What in the world is it? asked Dr. Doolittle, gazing at the strange creature. Lord save us, cried the duck. How does it make up its mind? It doesn't look to me as though it had any, said Jip the dog. This doctor, said Chi-Chi, is the push me pull you the rarest animal of the African jungles, the only two-headed beast in the world. Take him home with you, and your fortune's made. People will pay any money to see him. But I don't want any money, said the doctor. Yes, you do, said Dab-Dab the duck. Don't you remember how we had to pinch and scrape to pay the butcher's bill in Puddleby? And how are you going to get the sailor the new boat you spoke of, unless we have the money to buy it? I was going to make him one, said the doctor. Oh, do be sensible, cried Dab-Dab. -Dab. Where would you get all the wood and the nails to make one with? And besides, what are we going to live on? We shall be poorer than ever when we get back. Chee-Chee's perfectly right. Take the funny-looking thing along, do. Well, perhaps there is something in what you say, murmured the doctor. It certainly would make a nice new kind of pet, 
But does the, uh, what do you call it, really want to go abroad? Yes, I'll go, said the push me pull you, who saw at once from the doctor's face that he was a man to be trusted. You have been so kind to the animals here, and the monkeys tell me that I am the only one who will do. But you must promise me that if I do not like it in the land of the white men, you will send me back. Why, certainly, of course, of course, said the doctor. Excuse me, surely you are related to the deer family, are you not? Yes, said the push me pull you, to the Abyssinian gazelles and the Asiatic chamois, on my mother's side. My father's great-grandfather was the last of the unicorns. Most interesting, murmured the doctor, and he took a book out of the trunk which Dab Dab was packing, and began turning the pages. Let us see if Buffon says anything. I notice, said the duck, that you only talk with one of your mouths. Can't the other head talk as well? Oh, yes, said the push me pull you, but I keep the other mouth for eating, mostly. In that way I can talk while I am eating, without being rude. Our people have always been very polite. When the packing was finished and everything was ready to start, the monkeys gave a grand party for the doctor, and all the animals of the jungle came, and they had pineapples and mangoes and honey and all sorts of good things to eat and drink. After they had all finished eating, the doctor got up and said, My friends, I am not clever at speaking long words after dinner, like some men, and I have just eaten many fruits and much honey. But I wish to tell you that I am very sad at leaving your beautiful country. Because I have things to do in the land of the white men, I must go. After I have gone, remember never to let the flies settle on your food before you eat it, and do not sleep on the ground when the rains are coming. I, uh, uh, I hope you will all live happily ever after." When the doctor stopped speaking and sat down, all the monkeys clapped their hands a long time and said to one another, Let it be remembered always among our people that he sat and ate with us here under the trees, for surely he is the greatest of men. And the grand gorilla, who had the strength of seven horses in his hairy arms, rolled a great rock up to the head of the table and said, This stone for all time shall mark the spot. And even to this day, in the heart of the jungle, that stone is still there. And monkey mothers, passing through the forest with their families, still point down at it from the branches and whisper to their children, Shh! There it is! Look! where the good white man sat and ate food with us in the year of the great sickness. Then, when the party was over, the doctor and his pets started out to go back to the seashore, and all the monkeys went with him as far as the edge of their country, carrying his trunk and bags to see him off. End of chapter 10